Do we have any? Yeah. Do you guys share the same test unit unit tests? Oh boy, I tell you, I gotta I gotta thank Max uh, for the unit test. Yeah, because I think that will be a very good thing if you're using the exactly the same data to test it, because then we will know that both tools, whether by that Java or Python, are exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, actually, there's I, I've gotten a lot of value from having them be different because we find different issues. But uh, being able to compare, you know, the, the output between the two, um, Max's team actually had written a whole testi testing suite uh, before they even started writing the Java code. So the short answer is yes, we we that's been developed. I can't take credit for it. I think Max, uh, did you want to? So I, I just wanted to ask you that you're not standing in front of a microphone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good point though. Yeah. Yes, yes. Contribute. Yeah. <laughs> Contribute to the best. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Kate. Why don't you, why don't you just. I, I can do that. Um, yeah, the, um, the comment to, uh, or the statement to make is that there is the SPDX testbed project, which is uh, where you can um, add your tool uh, or your tool suite and challenge it against some test cases if it is compliant and if it can accomplish them. And that um, is also helps to get um, the tools in sync and that they are on an equal level of quality. It, Max, is that in the uh, uh, SPDX Git repository? It's in the SPDX org as SPDX testbed. T SPDX testbed. So you guys can check that out. And if you have pro if find any issues with it, it's open source and welcome to contributions. So great. So I actually, Rose, did, did we want to open that up just to general questions yeah. first? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we are just going to open it up to general questions that you have for the presentation, and then we are going to talk more about kind of the tooling landscape, some of the gaps there. Um, we're really looking to get feedback as to what you all need as tooling implementers, as users to move forward with 3.0. So what are some of the biggest blockers? What are you struggling with? What are you looking forward to? We're looking to collect that information. And these are discussion prompts. If reading any of this sparks uh, curiosity, feel free to speak up. Just make sure that you speak into the microphone so that the live stream people can also hear. Yeah. OK, uh, first question is, um, when will we have a final uh, 3.0 spec? <laughs> I'm that sorry, for, <laughs> sorry for the question. <laughs> oh, that's not fair. This is my least favorite question. Yes, yes I know. Because I, I can't give you a good answer on that. <laughs> what I can tell you is that we're, we're pretty close to the release candidate two. We've already done release candidate one, which basically is a release of the model. Uh, and the intention behind release candidate one, which actually was released, what, two or three months ago? I think it's two or three months ago, was that it, the specification is stable enough for tools developers to start working with it and try out the implementation. As you heard, the Python libraries have uh, been updated with the prototype. I've been doing some Java work on the prototype, and I'd be very interested to hear if any of you have tried doing SPDX3 as well and in your experience. Now, what's happened is, this is a very long answer, I'm sorry. Uh, I know. <laughs> what, what's happened is we've learned a lot through this implementation and we found some issues with the model that kind of prevented us from being able to move forward until we solve those issues. So I have a call at uh, six o'clock tonight to try to close on, I think, one of the last three remaining issues that we have, big issues that we have open, and then we'll be done, we'll be ready for release candidate two. So I'm thinking, I'm gonna go out of limit and say two to three weeks, we should have release candidate two out there. Well, release candidate two will have, first of all, it's gonna fix the problems we found in release candidate one, most important, uh, and, and it's gonna be a serialization specification for one of the serializations we support It'll be JSON-LD, 
If you're, if you're not familiar with JSON-LD, it looks a lot like JSON, but it has linked data. So if you're an RDF geek like me, uh, it'll look kind of familiar as well because you can easily convert it to RDF. The reason we pick JSON-LD is it is one of the harder formats to support because it requires not just the, the syntactical JSON information, but the semantic information about what these things really mean. Uh, so we picked the hardest one first because the other ones should be easy. So we'll have that spec out there, uh, hopefully in two to three weeks. We'll get that out there, get feedback based on the model and the serialization, and who knows, hopefully within two or three months. I don't know. I can't give you a good answer beyond that because it depends on what we find in the release candidate too. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Kate. Just, just making the point that the more people come in and help us test, the faster it's going to be released. And I'll also say that that's where we find like the most amount of bugs is when we're actually trying to write code and implement these yep. solutions. So. So basically, in the next Linux Foundation Summit Europe next year. Yeah. <laughs> before then, before then. Either that Don't give him a mic for that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it I, does. Yeah. Hi, Gary. I just want to know. Uh, feedback you've had on the 3.0 from people from different companies? Any positive things you can share? Oh, uh, let's see. Most, <laughs> I tell you, most of the feedback has been around these issues that we've been finding from the serialization. Uh, I'd say on the positive feedback side of just some of the new use cases that are being supported, I tell you, people are pretty excited about like the AI use cases. That's pretty cool. Uh, in terms of what it supports and uh, some, what's that? I was going to say the build profile. Build profile, which unfortunately we didn't get the presentation of here today, but be, it basically supports the, uh, you know, the repeatability of the build process and the provenance of all the build artifacts that are in there. So if you're interested in security, um, having that build information is, is really, really helpful. And the security profile that you did get to see, I got, we've been getting some good feedback on that. Um, and, and, you know, and then, like I said, the other feedback is around a couple of the issues that were almost worked through. So It was certainly the first time I've seen all those profiles come together. I think it's a great concept. Look forward to seeing the future and a bit evolving. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> other questions? General questions? Um, so where can I find like the RC1 spec so I can try it out in my tool? And a second question is, can there be multiple profiles in the same SPDX uh, ah. document? Yes, yes and yes. Um, so the, uh, the, the GitHub repository for the spec is called the SPDX-3-model. Yeah, so just pull it up over here. Yeah, so github.com slash SPDX slash SPDX-3-model. <laughs> Um, and there's a github.io page. It should be there's it should be in the README file how to navigate to that. There is a uh, uh, a generated set of pages that actually describe the model, and then you'll also find uh, a generated uh, shackle file that is a uh, kind of a schema that supports the JSON LD serialization. Uh, so you'll find that in there as well. Um, the one thing I will mention is uh, we do have a to-do item for RC2 to improve the documentation. So don't expect great readable documentation. <coughs> but because it's a kind of machine generated, so you'll see the, the classes and the properties described. But it doesn't look all that pretty. We got a really pretty one coming, uh, and it's a little late. But uh, our plan is to have that out there for RC2. So should see an improvement on the readability soon. Uh, multiple profiles. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, uh, yes, you definitely, basically when you generate a, what we're in 3.0, we're calling an SPDX collection, you can think of it as an SPDX document. Uh, you base, it has a field that says, which profiles am I supporting? Um, it is assumed that core is in there. So you don't have to put core in there because everything has to use core. So that's always assumed. But if you wanna communicate to your downstream users of SPDX, that I am going to put licensing in there, I'm going to put security info in there, and I'm going to put the build info. There is a, uh, uh, it's called um, profile conformance, mm -hmm. I think is the name of the property, and it's a list. So you can put as many in there as you want. 
the expectation is that if there is a field that's required for that property, it'll be there. So it would, in fact, it would be considered an invalid document if you said you supported the security profile, but you didn't include the security information. So, yeah, long answer, but yeah. Just on that point, Gary, and a, a semantic point, um, is there a certain order that you're going to put those profiles into a, um, an SPDX file? You can put it in any order. Any order, any order, yeah. So, yep. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, um, during the presentation about the AI profiles, I noticed uh, s several properties were text-based. I, I noticed the energy uh, consumption, for example, uh, which was a, a neat description, but uh, putting that into something more codified and machine readable yep. would be great. How do you think that will deal with the naming of the fields? Um, is that just that the field names will be the same and uh, the no, once no, the versions update? Answer, answer on the mic. <laughs> I'll pick that up since Scopey isn't here and I'm in those meetings all the time. Um, we've actually discussed that physically and we've been planning that we'll probably change the name slightly for the when there's an actual formal enumeration. But we didn't feel that the state of the enumerations was ready yet for us to code it up. Yeah. So we went for text to try to get the data and then we will refine it over time as soon as, and, you know, if you've got versions and v views on what the enumeration should be, just start mailing us on those mailing lists and start working it. We'll start working for it for 3.1. Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Yes, still on the profiles, it was said today that uh, the AI profile has borrowed some properties from other profiles. So does that mean that if I include the AI profile, I should also include these other profiles or should it be automatic or? No, it's just based on the model. Yeah, uh, it, so there's certain um, software prof things like packages and files, they're gonna be there for the AI as well. And so the properties are coming in from that portion of it. And so there are things that are already required in the core and so the core is inheriting, so we're just insisting that these profiles must be there. And there's a couple, that I think there's one or two that were optional for the core, but they're mandatory if you're in the AI profile. So I can show the slide from the security um, example, which is basically, it's the idea is that, you know, if you're implementing AI, it's, you probably have a piece of software that you need to create an element for. And so you're gonna use the software profile for that, but then you're gonna use the AI profile to actually describe characteristics of that piece of AI. And then I, while we're waiting for the microphone to transition, I'll just add a little to that. Um, within the profile definition, we allow the profile to further restrict the uh, uh, core properties and classes. So you could say, okay, like concluded license is not required in core, but it's actually there. It's part of, you could put a concluded license on a package in core. But the licensing profile, if you support the licensing profile, it requires that that be, that that property be there or that relationship actually be there. So you can add further restrictions, but you can never make it more general. So if you say you comply to a license profile, you may be, you may be, uh, uh, you know, further restricting things that are defined in other profiles, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this is an example from security, but like the security profile contains information about the CVEs, but there will still be the core profile, which has information about the agents that interact with the software, the organizations. Software profile is the actual software, and then security is just enumerating vulnerabilities related to the software and software profile. Yeah, I have a question. I don't know if this is too detailed for the whole audience, but um, uh, just that you know, in, uh, we have projects where we use SPDX not as an output format only, but also as an input format. You might be familiar with that, um, with the OSS Review Toolkit. And um, here's a very specific question because we observe some package managers that allow you to not d uh, specify the version of a dependency that you use, but can say latest. 
Now my colleagues told me, well, can you take this question with you into the SPD summit? Because the, the hash code for external references is a mandatory field. And so they're fighting every time we have such a, a situation. The question, because you mentioned early hash code, now is this more flexible with the new, uh, with the new version? Is there a way then, so how would you handle that in future? Is, is it the strict no, you also need to define the final version or is there also an option where we could then represent such? It's not recommended to everyone, right, to do this, <laughs> just as a, but sometimes we cannot choose the, uh, the, uh, change this and then we need to handle that somehow. Yeah, so I'm gonna give you two answers. Uh, one is from the SPDX spec point of view, which is more flexible, and so you don't have to put that in there. However, um, there's another answer, which is if you're trying to comply with like the NTIA minimum specification, I'd give you a different answer because there, uh, they do state that it's, it's required that you put in the specific version. Um, Kate and I were just in an email dialogue last week about something similar with the supplier information. And uh, the, the, the thinking is, it, it, with, with a, if, you're, if you're the producer of the package itself, you know, so if you're, if you're building an SBOM and you're building the software that's being delivered, um, the idea is you should be able to put in the real version, right? You should know that. So making it required for that scenario seems reasonable. What's hard is if you're going through the dependencies of that build, you may not know all of the information for that. So, um, you know, in that, in that scenario, I would suggest you put in what you know, you know, so if it's latest, put in a string latest, you know, uh, you know put in the information that you know, and uh, if you can get the information, you can. Now the problem is that still doesn't meet the letter of the law for the uh, minimum specification because they say it's gotta have you know, the actual, but I, I do know in practice that you, sometimes you just can't get that information for that artifact because, you know, it's two or three levels away. You know, if you're a third level dependency and they didn't capture it in their SBOM. But if everybody followed the practice of always putting it in when they produce it and they always produce SBOMs, we should be able to get there. I'll, Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, I'll also comment that the CISA tooling working group is basically looking at the, each of these fields and trying to determine what is pragmatic and what makes sense. And this actually, issue was actually talked about last week in that meeting as well. And the view that seemed to come in from the room is, well, you, do you put no information and then just declare it as un, you know, unknown completely? Or do you put in what you know? And the view was put in what you know, because that at least gives people clues to go find out more, even if it's not perfect. GitHub also has this issue right now in their, uh, they generate a SPDX document for just a repo, and when they're scanning requirement files, they will run into like version ranges where it's yeah. between one and two, but they don't know which version, so they put the version range as the version. Yeah. And, and perhaps we should publicly blame that as bad practice, right, to do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we, we're trying to figure out, okay, how can, what, what should we guide people to try to standardize on? Mm -hmm. And so that's part of you know, here's how to do it pragmatically. And if everyone tries to line up with the same pragmatism, at least we can start to exchange. Yeah. But again, if you're producing the package, put the version in, <laughs> then everybody downstream can, you know, put in the right stuff. <laughs> I'll let you decide. Yeah, um, just wanted to add to that, if the version is stable, you resolve it to something and you hand it downstream, the version might still might not be the same for them to resolve. So um, I, I wouldn't say that it just solves the issue. I, th I still think there's some complexity involved that um, is not yet represented there. So Max, you triggered a thought. I got one more thing to add is in SPDX, um, there are different relationship, there's a, a wide variety of relationship types to pick from for dependencies. So like you could have one that's prov that basically says this is provided. So if you, if you pick a relationship type that says, uh, if it's provided meaning that it's gonna be on the system that it's being delivered to. So you know that you get a dependency on this, but your, your package doesn't include that. So you can pick relationship types to, to better convey in a more granular fashion what you know and what you don't know. So that's just another, another possible loss. Yeah. So I wouldn't call it a solution, but another hint you know, as to what's known. 
SPTX3 O uses uh, JSON LD, mm -hmm. and uh, JSON LD requires context JSON. Yes. And uh, I, I, uh, what I'd like to ask you is, context JSON will be provided from SPDX working group, or uh, it can be distributed each company or some kind of organization. Yeah, so we will be providing the, the context for the JSON-LD. In fact, I think it's gonna be generated from the, uh, from the specification. So there's already, a, I know, a prototype. Uh, didn't Armin, he, he produced a, a prototype to do that. Oh, it's, it's there, okay. So yeah, so I, I guess we're generate, it's in the uh, generated files for the spec today. Yeah, so it's fairly static. I, if those of you not familiar with uh, context files, it, it just provides the mapping between the actual field names that are used and the uh, semantic information or the meaning behind it. It's the linking in the JSON link data. So I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, the post 3.0 era and the new profiles. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the harder profile, this is gonna be something that I'm gonna be interested in. Uh, I often see that uh, a lot of harder manufacturers, they really have their electronic bill of materials which are delivered in a certain, sometimes customized standard, sometimes it's, it's really like a spreadsheet or of some sort. Is there anything that is uh, foreseen in the tooling in this regard? So how to motivate people to really start to produce that in the SPDX form? I think uh, getting it motivated for people to start producing the SPDX form means that they see that they can put all the pieces together. And then quite frankly, people who are integrating needs to ask for it. So if someone's buying hardware from someone, that is the way to say, hey, I want this in this form when you give it to me. I don't want a spreadsheet anymore. And then maybe, we'll, maybe we can, they can start to automate it and ingest it when they're creating an uh, integrated s system. So it's a similar kind of thing as if we are consuming software packages and that's yeah. gonna be a... Yeah, uh, and so basically bring it in that way and then do the integration. Like I say, people need to start asking for it, but we need to make sure we've got a format that people can use and that will integrate for the safety cases that, you know. So anyone who's doing safety and functional safety analysis may have a certain motivations to getting apart from someone that they actually provide this information in this format. So like the whole automotive industry, hopefully, will help necessitate the change. <laughs> that will be one of, the, uh, one of the customers that I'm gonna be interested in as well, yeah. So if we are at SPDX Series Zero, so I like this profile approach, so thank you for that, first of all. Uh, it's in the direction of everything as code, right? And then therefore the question for the roadmap, because if we look at export control or potentially also liability, things like that, where you also need a business context to do then the whole evaluation, is there already a planning of also having a kind of business profile then in future? Or yeah. how would be yeah. the way to... So to um, come chat with me afterwards. There's a project um, called Oscar that's basically trying to hook SPDX up with the OSCAL controls coming out of NIST. And so um, what they're trying to do is come up with some of the controls and then see how it's implemented and then figure out and we'll adjust SPDX so that it can support it. Thank so you. we're heading in that direction, but uh, we're looking to make sure we get enough people giving us input. So if you're familiar with doing it, put on business controls, yeah, just please come let me know and I'll connect you up. And maybe we can get that project launched. I'm in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excellent. excellent. Any other uh, questions on the presentation? If not, we were, uh, how much more time do we have? Uh, 12 minutes. 12 minutes. Well, I, I could, we could do 12 minutes on that. Uh, but there is a landscape also part of the discussion now? Yeah, yeah, so w one of the things we wanted to do with the group is um, kind of landscape oriented, but um, you know, we wanted to get some feedback for SPDX 3.0, what, what do you need to adopt it? You know, uh, if you're a tool provider, what do you need out of the spec? If you're a consumer or producer, what kind of tools do you need? You know, what are you looking for? What's your roadblock? What's in your way? So we wanted to get some feedback to help guys, because we're, we're kind of getting close to being done on the spec, and now we're starting to shift into the tooling, and uh, we'd like to get some guidance from all of you on where to focus. So that's, that's one of the thoughts. So it's a little bit landscapey, but you know, 
Well, I, I more meant the, the landscape page, like the, the CNCF uh, landscape. Uh, what I wanted to say, at least, um, uh, I'm also involved with the Linux Foundation Energy. We also have a landscape page. It it's, uh, contains less projects than uh, the, the one of the CNCF. Maybe, therefore, it's a bit more structured. But also, we, we came up with uh, an overarching uh, architecture and that defines the categories we have on that page. I think that is the main, and th that was also addressed in, in, the, in the setup, getting some categories mm -hmm. at first that will really help to, to identify the projects and structure them once you start adding them. So I think th that and will be the main first step maybe to, to, yeah. to fill the landscape. Well, we would certainly welcome your input on helping us look at the categories. We were initially thinking of lining up with the SBOM types they're coming in. Yeah, I know. So which tools are working with which, which SBOM types, as well as which versions of the uh, FET are supporting which tools? So some of the pr filtering criteria we're looking to see. Like which, which tools are supporting which versions of SPDX? Because we'll be seeing a shift from tools on 2.3 over to 3.0. And people are going to be wanting to know which one they're working with over time, too. But um, anyone who is interested in working on the landscape, um, you know, basically, um, Jordy and myself, come see us and we, we would definitely welcome your input. Okay. Okay. That's helpful, though. It's got me thinking. I'm wondering if profiles should be in the mix somehow, too. Yeah. You know? Our tools support which profiles. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thought. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So in the last, you know, eight or nine minutes or, or so, um, what do you guys think as far as feedback for 3.0 adoption? What's in your way? What, uh, what could we do to help you do adoption? How many of you are, use Python as part of your ecosystem? Python, a lot of Python. Have you looked at the, uh, the Python library? Have you? How's it, how does it look? Do you think that's, uh, that's something that you could use? That's stable and, and something you could? Those that, have, that haven't looked at Python, yes? Do you know how the Python libraries compare to the Java tools when it comes to performance? So this is something I am struggling in the last days that I validated, um, I, what is it, 2.2 million uh, lines of JSON file with the Python tool and it ran overnight uh, just to complete without any output before that, so. Yeah. Oh, well the Java tools are really fast, so. <laughs> I maintain the Java tools, by the way. I'll let Max talk about the Python tools. I think that's been fixed, right? Yeah, um, let's say the Python tools in 0 1 8, 8, uh, zero, uh, in the um, zero 080 zero version um, created the uh, license list for every license check things and that caused a lot of traffic and that was fixed and is now a lot faster and I would be interested if you s still see issues with the latest version that I was I one, but I'm not sure. three weeks ago it was released. I'm interested. Yeah, let's talk later. I'm just curious. I'm just curious if you tried validating with the uh, Java okay. tools. Okay. If you go to the on the online tools, boy, that's a big file to upload. Uh, but the online tools, which is tools.spdx.org, I think it is tools.spdx.org. There's a validate. You upload your file, and that's running Java in the back end. If you want to try it out, I'd be curious. Submit an issue if it's slow. And then I can uh, I can compare notes with Max and see which one's faster. <laughs> so someone should write a Rust one. And Rust. <laughs> oh, the other one that we're looking at is uh, JavaScript. So keep your eyes open for JavaScript. But Rust Rust would be really useful. Somebody should write a Rust library. Yeah, this the the. the, the yeah. Yeah, the Go library is coming up, so we need. Uh, that's why I'm talking about we need a common unit test to set because yeah. all the tools need to use the same test. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, yeah. Have yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you're not. We are not using in this I way. No. Like, yeah. yeah. Do we still need the CICD? I can help you on that. <laughs> you never ask it. Yeah, I can, I can use help. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I, I'm a bit curious about the ecosystem using uh, SpeedX3. Have you got connections with, uh, because we were working a lot with Yocto project, for instance, so that's why we can actually more or less use, I think, the Python tool, because uh, Yocto is written in, uh, in Python, so it should be quite okay. And I know that they plan to work on that, so I don't know if you have some, uh, uh, some uh, forecast on that, because it's, uh, it's quite sensitive. And, and on the other side, for the SBOM conceptions, we also uh, made uh, some analysis about the tools uh, to check SBOM and to check, uh, you know, CVs and so on. So we we checked Daggerboard and a lot of different tools, and uh, we didn't find so much uh, um, really accurate tools with all the SpeedX2 uh, for the moment. But I guess for the SpeedX3, you're going to have the same issue. So have you got, like, uh, some connections with some open source projects to uh, include SBOM and to make sure that we can uh, actually track CBE correctly? at the microphone. Um, on the Python side, I definitely encourage you to switch over to the libraries because, you know, it, it's your best chance of keeping up with 3.0. Uh, I don't, I think the, the, the hard part in answering the question, I should turn it over to Max, give you the hard question, is when, when is it going to fully support 3.0? But then you need to know when the spec is done. <laughs> it depends on when the spec is done. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a tough question, but but if you're using the libraries, you know you got you got a lot of people that are pushing to uh, to keep that keep that current. And I, I the second question you had was more on the upstream S bombs from the uh, you know definitely want to get more upstream suppliers to have accurate S bombs in there. And and I, I don't have a good answer on that, but I will say. Um, you know, what's something I've been trying to do in SPDX almost from the day I started working on this is getting the package managers to natively output SPDX. And we are finally starting to see some progress in uh, NPM, the node package manager. There's an RF, RFI and they actually have a pull request to actually implement generating SPDX as part of NPM. So then it should be hard, it'd almost be hard not to produce an SPDX document once, once that's implemented. We do have plugins for Maven. We have plugins for Gradle now that generate SPDX. But I, you know, it's like okay, the, they're out there, but people aren't using it. How do we get them to use it? I'd be open to any help or suggestions to, to kind of maybe it's just awareness. I don't know. Uh, we did start, by the way, a set of quick start guides to help c overcome one of the hurdles, which is you know just knowing that they're out there and uh, and knowing how to actually get started. So I'm hoping that helps. And, and do you, sorry, do you think you can maintain a map on your website to say, okay, we've got this tool uh, which is SPDX3 compliant and so on, because it, it would help? Yes, we, we do have today a list, we have a list of uh, tools on the website. If you go to spdx.dev slash tools, you'll see list for open source and commercial tools, and we do list which versions they support. So as they... <laughs> two things have to happen. They have to support 3.0 and they have to tell us they support 3.0. Then we'll update the website and keep that current. Thank you. So here's the quick start guides. If um, you're interested, we are always looking for people whose tools use or um, consume generate SPDX to put a quick, just, you know, it doesn't have to be long, just this is how you get started using SPDX, using our tools. That will help. Mm -hmm. Bring awareness, and um, then I was going to go to the tools page on SPDX.dev. Yeah. So, for example, Yocto, I just put in the link to the existing quick start guides for Yocto on that. But if any of you have tools, and it doesn't have to be 3.0, this is for 2.1, 2.2, mm -hmm. you know, any of the current versions. If you have tools that generate or consume SPDX and you want to make that tool visible, submit a pull request. To that, uh, to that GitHub repo that was up on the screen a minute ago. Yeah, so these are open source tools um, that we know support it, and this is the most up-to-date information we have with the versions supported. And the SBOM types, which comes from CISA, um, and that's produce, consume, or transform, so. Is it trans transform? Yeah. Transform, yeah, and then within that, that translate, there's translate, merge, and support yeah. yeah so exactly based on like uh, what you said there is not much awareness which I also feel because like if you go to Cyclone DX website 
they have a very nice uh, similar kind of tool page where you can select your language what you want to support or the package manager and is it commercial is it open source you will find something yeah uh, but yeah now i see this uh, it's a good initiative from spdx yeah. because people are generally not aware that there is something for this particular use case from and the SPDX. tooling landscape will hopefully address some of that as well yeah. The landscape will be a much more interactive, searchable version of this table that we have right now. So, Perfect. other thoughts? Or I guess we don't really have. Oh, I don't know if it matters. We're What's no that? one's after us, but <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But is it? Uh, it is. We're at, at time. The time. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you again for coming today. We'll be, all of us will be here, all conference. So um, if you have questions, we'd love to answer them and have, have those discussions with you. Yeah. So thank and if you. you. If you think of anything tomorrow, the SPDX emailing list is all on our website. Drop something into the mail list and uh, you should be able to get some good responses through that. So yep. thank you. And I just got the build presentation from Nisha. So we'll publish the slides, it will have um, an overview of the build profile if you are looking forward to that today. Okay, great. Okay, so yeah, look for an email with the slides. Thank you. Thanks.